Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Great, good to see you. White Castle, is it true that White Castle might be the first fast food restaurant? If not the first, one of the, the very first in the country, yes. They were pioneering in, in the fast food business and a lot of the norms that we associate with the fast food business, having the same menu at every restaurant and going in and expecting to receive the same product whether we go to that restaurant in you know, one city or another city or another state or another country. That whole concept of standardization was very much pioneered by White Castle. Everything's white and very clean, that's not by accident, is it? No, no, not at, not at all. The, uh, in the 1920s, when they got started, hamburger stands and you know fast serve restaurants weren't necessarily thought well of. I mean, you found them at fairs, you found them along the roadside, maybe next to gas stations. They were greasy and, spoons. Exactly, they weren't necessarily clean and the, the, the food was not necessarily of good quality. So part of what they were doing, in addition to sell, you know, they're selling the hamburgers, they're selling this idea that you're going to get good service and everything will be, will be clean. They used a lot of stainless steel in the restaurants so when you went in everything was very shiny they coined the name white castle white was for purity and cleanliness and then the castle was for strength and permanence and stability they had bakeries they established several bakeries to make the bread so that all their buns would be standard and then they would ship their buns from their several bakeries to their restaurants so the whole concept of standardization comes from them we see a lot of paper products here we're familiar with today, the sacks and the and the hat and the they, hamburger boxes. The hamburger too. box and they invented all this stuff, right? Yes, yes they did. It started with laundry. They wanted the they called them operators, the people who worked in the restaurants, and they wanted them to wear white hats and white aprons and look very crisp and clean. After a 10 to 12 hour shift grilling hamburgers, those aprons were a mess and the hats were sweaty. And they were spending a lot on laundry trying to get grease out of these white aprons and white hats. So paper napkins were on the market, but all of these other products of paper were not necessarily. So Billy Ingram worked with engineers at a company in Wisconsin to develop a paper cap folding machine. You can see it, there's the original paper cap folding machine there in that picture. And once they got that working so that it could fold the paper caps, then they started with you know other paper products like the headbands and things like that. And they were supplying all of the White Castle restaurants with these products. And then they started supplying other restaurants and other companies. Um, there's one of the aprons. Uh -huh. That's a bit of a later one. We associate White Castle with Columbus now, but it didn't begin in Columbus, correct? No, no, it's, I mean, it's been here for a very long time, but it actually started in Wichita, Kansas uh, in 1921. The first restaurant in Columbus came in 1929, and then they moved their headquarters here in 1934. There's a picture of the kind of the familiar headquarters building, which is actually not going to be their headquarters for much longer as they're preparing to move to a new headquarters. I noticed these, there's, there's a poster here that emphasizes this Thing about the beef. Can you tell about that? Tonight? Oh yes, this is one of the this is one of the 100% beef posters. There were often signs posted in the restaurants that stressed this 100% beef, so people would know exactly what was in the sandwich. They did have a, a recipe of which cuts of meat they wanted ground into their hamburger because they don't add anything. They, they kind of try to balance the fat in the meat so that they don't have to add anything to the hamburger once it gets on the grill. Show us some more posters, these are great. The, most of these posters probably date from around the 1940s and 1950s. This is an awesome, this one is, is awesome. We think of hamburgers going with french fries or onion rings or other side dishes. The second product at White Castle, their, their number two product for many, many years was coffee because when they started in the 20s and 30s, they were, they were open late, they were open, and people who worked second and third shifts were coming in to eat there, and coffee was, was their, their second product to hamburgers. So. Well, back then you couldn't go to a Starbucks on every co corner to get your coffee. So No, there weren't to, as many coffee shops either. We're, we're so familiar to White Castle now, we might take it for granted, but it's interesting to see that 
this company here in Columbus really kind of figured out fast food. They, they did. Even their dishes were innovative. Their dishes were never for sale, the China dishes that they used in the restaurants in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Somehow a lot of people have them. So <laughs> they were never sold. But they started designing, they wanted to wash them in dishwashers. And they found when they put regular coffee mugs into the dishwashers, they would have puddles of hot water on the top. Well, that's why there's a little notch here. They called their, they, they got this brilliant idea that if we notch the mugs, the water will drain off, for example. So even something as simple as a coffee mug, they made some innovation to, to make it work better in, in the restaurants. This is a fascinating collection. Thanks so much for sharing it with us. You're very welcome.